everybody. This is Pastor Susan, and welcome as we continue our Lenten journey from broken to whole. Um, and think about the ways in which you and I are called to pivot in the midst of our brokenness to find that pathway to, ho uh, to wholeness and healing. Um, today, I want to talk about... I think I want to talk about the ways in which we respond to accusation and struggle. And I want to begin by a disclaimer. This is kind of one of those times of telling on myself um, as a broken and not perfect person, um, a human being who, who struggles in her own skin. And that is, um, you know, when I'm confronted or I feel like in some way I am being challenged, my initial response is to defend myself, to explain so that others will be able to either understand or they might uh, shift in their opinion or whatever. It is a way in which I usually respond when I am challenged in some way or pushed back upon. Um, and uh, in this passage of scripture today, uh, as we're looking at the final hours of Jesus's life on this earth, um, we're going to talk about the arrest of Jesus and what happens after that and how Jesus responds. Um, so listen to these words from Mark chapter 14. Immediately, while Jesus was still speaking, this is in the garden, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived and with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him under away under guard. So when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, Have I come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. Okay, there's a whole lot going on here. Um, first of all, let's talk about Judas for just a minute. Um, you know, there's probably not a harder thing to face than being betrayed by someone you love. And we don't know what was going on with Judas. We don't know a, a whole lot about him from the scriptures. We don't know whether the reason that he handed Jesus over was because um, he believed that that might spark some kind of action by Jesus so that it would finally determine that Jesus was who he said he was, that somehow Jesus would show some miraculous sign or become a political activist or a zealot. Um, or, you know, if, if Jesus was just fed up, with Jesus. We, we don't know what was the motivation for what Judas did. All we know is that, um, that he did turn Jesus over. And we also know that the Jews, um, some people in the Jew Jewish, not all Jews for sure, but people who were in the Jewish leadership at that time felt threatened by Jesus. Um, and so they were seeking to have him killed. Um, it seems like it's so antithetical because Jesus' preaching was about the kingdom of God and about love and grace, and yet they were opposed to it. They were defending the what, what they stood on, which was the law. Um, and so they sought to kill him. And um, so we don't know why Jesus um, is betrayed by Judas. He is. Um, and Jesus is arrested. There's this battle that goes on, um, you know, in this passage, in, in, John, in Mark's gospel, excuse me, Mark's gospel, um, the person who is, uh, who chops off a 
the high priest slave's ear is not identified in one of the other gospels. I believe it's Luke. Um, it is <laughs> it is actually Peter who does this. But again, you know, there's this idea of swords and um, the guards coming in. They're armed as well. And Jesus says, no, this is not who I am. Have you come out with swords to arrest me like some kind of bandit? You could have, you could have arrested me at any time, but here you are. And that's not who Jesus was. Um, so he doesn't offer a defense when he's arrested. And then he comes before the high priest and then later Pilate, and he offers no defense. I, now, I want to go back to what I said. Usually when I'm confronted or feel, um, feel attacked in any way, my first response is to defend myself. And yet Jesus didn't do that at all. He remained silent, in fact. Now, why did he do that? I want us to go back to what we talked about yesterday, and that was Jesus in prayer. A lot of times, if, if I am what um, we would call, might call prayed up, I'm much less defensive and more trusting in God. And that certainly was what Jesus was as well. God was with him. God gave him the courage to stand up and gave him the courage to be silent and allow God to be at work in him and through the events that would happen. So today, again, as we are thinking about pivoting from our brokenness to whole, two things I would lift up. One is to pray today for the ability to not defend yourself, but to allow God to do the work in you. When you are feeling attacked, to know that God will give you words to say or the ability to remain silent, but our dependence has to be on God. The second thing I would encourage you to do is to, again, reach out to someone who may be suffering and let them know that they are not alone, that you care about them, and that God does too. May it be so in your life and in mind this day. And may we reflect the one who came and showed us the way, not the way of the world, but the way of God. Amen and amen. Mm -hmm.